Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to the Lad in VFR YouTube channel. It's me Luke, also known as British Avgeek and I'm here to create a tutorial to help you guys get used to the Latin VFR A340-300 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're in Madrid International Airport LEMD for the ICAO code for flight to Tenerife North following the official Latin VFR A340 tutorial. So hit like, hit subscribe, share any tips, tricks, thoughts down in the comments section below. The flight today is going to assume that you are following the tutorial PDF included within the product and we're going to follow therefore uh, all of the same routes and setup within that. As you can see initially we are in a cold and dark state and um, to begin with we can take our seat, look up to the overhead panel and we can turn battery 1 and battery 2 on. The next step is to turn our attention to the EFB. So, if we turn to the doors page, the ground services page, we can select jetway by clicking where it says jetway and that's now automatically prompting the jetway to connect, the air bridge to connect. We're also going to select GPU and that will then position the GPU in place in front uh, under the nose wheel at which point we can turn our attention back to the overhead panel and turn the external power on line A and B once we're done we can then enable all of the relevant ground service equipment the catering trucks, baggage, all the rest of it to populate around the aeroplane by using the toggle in the EFB So now we want to think about adding in our Simbri flight plan. With that, we want to make sure we've pressed the settings cog and we've added our Simbrief user ID into the Simbrief settings field. As you can see, I've done mine there. Then press the third icon down to head to the Simbrief My Flight page and refresh the cog there to get your latest inputs. So we've got uh, LEMD, Dolfo Suarez, Madrid Paraja to the uh, Tenerife North Airport GCXO. Four options down here, show OFP, sync plan, sync payload, sync fuel. We can press sync plan, sync payload and sync fuel. And what that will do is manually, um, or automatically rather, load everything into the aeroplane for you. It's worth noting that Simbrief flight plan is the recommended input method for creating your flight plans from Latin VFR as well. And... Uh, currently manual CDU insertion of coordinates as waypoints aren't allowed at the moment. We now want to turn our attention to the init page so we press init to head to the init A page and we want to make sure we've set our cost index of 15 and if you want to amend your flight number you can here by selecting that and inputting it like so and you can see our cruise altitude from our Simbri flight plan of flight level 350 is input there. Look up to the overhead panel and you want to turn ADRS 1, 2 and 3 to nav. And then we go to the IRS init page, align on reference, confirm align. We can press return now and because we have power to the aeroplane we want to make sure we've got the nav lights set. No smoking signs, seatbelt signs if we've finished refuelling. And by clicking on the flight plan page we can see here that it's fed our Simbri flight plan into the CDU. Uh, so we've got Madrid departing 3-6 left onto the Cáceres for November departure to Cáceres which is there, CCS. We can double check this by clicking into the lateral revision page for LEMD, go to departure and you can see there Castellas 4 November 36 left are selected. Same with GCXO, we're expecting runway 12 and the Samar 1 Lima arrival so we can do the same as well here by going into the arrival page ILS 12 Samat 1 Lima. Now for those of you with a 
Navagraph subscription, you can use the charts page. We can search LEMD, head to departure, and we can look for our Caceres for November takeoff, like so, and get that displayed on the screen. You can zoom in and drag it around a little bit just to help the view. And you can see there we'll depart initially to MD901, 004 degrees, max 220 knots, 5500 feet, turning west 282 degrees, accelerating to 240 knots, down to the Colomena Viejo VOR 1173, and then outbound towards. Caceres at or above 13,000 feet. It's worth noticing as well uh, the transition altitude on the charts there 13,000 and further down on the inset there initial ATC clearance maintained 13,000 and request flight level change en route so we want to make sure we've set 13,000 as our initial altitude for the climb. So we can turn these uh, dials here just to increase the brightness of our FCU and we want to make sure this goes up to 13,000. For those of you on PC you can press B and it will set your local Q&H and you want to just click the collar across to HPA for hectopascals if you want to use the correct value for Spain. Now we need to calculate our takeoff speeds so back to the EFB, we have that calculator icon there. We can refresh the aircraft configuration to get the latest gross weight. And then we can look at the flaps configuration page and select flap 2 following the tutorial PDF. This is apparently the standard flap setting for the A340-300. Uh, it's typically used in most situations. Anti-ice will be off, air conditioning will be on for this takeoff, and the ICAO code for Madrid, L E M D, enter. Runway 36 left. And we can press the refresh button there to get the latest QH. We want to make sure that matches. So 13, we get that wind direction in there too. So when we press calculate, we get the output like so. So V131 knots, rotate 131, V2 148. We want to take those values and add them into the performance page 131 131 148 the transition altitude here in Spain is 13,000 so we need to make sure that is correctly set and we want the thrust reduction altitude acceleration altitude of 1450 feet above the ground level on top of our airfield elevation which is 1998 feet MSL which will give us 3450 you can see that's set there already if you want to change those values though you um, of course can I'm going to press 2 for flaps and if you wish to set a trimble horizontal stabilizer value you can or you can just go 2 slash and leave the rest now we have a flex value of 62 there at the moment. The higher the temperature, the more the aeroplane will derate the engines for takeoff. So if that said 80 degrees, the engine N1 values will be a lot lower than uh, the value for takeoff when the flex is 62 degrees. We'll leave it as it is set at the moment. 
we should make sure here up here we have no IRS aligned uh, issues and you can see it is all aligned and with that in mind we can now make sure the init B page is complete it's automatically populated the radnav page has whatever required values we want to monitor the flight and our performance page is complete looking back to the overhead panel we now want to go master switch on for the APU wait a couple of seconds and we can press start while the APU is starting up we can return back to the services page and we can begin now to remove all of the stairs, the cargo equipment and the relevant ground equipment around the aeroplane ready for our pushback. We'll leave GPU and cones on for the time being and we can see on the external view here all of the doors are closed, the majority of the ground equipment is clear. APU is available So we want to press the APU bleed button Remove the external power And at that point we can remove the GPU Make sure the parking brake is on Before we remove the chocks and the cones And on the charts page taxi routings chart is the one that we want we can just make sure it's all set up around about where we are roughly back on the overhead panel we want to ensure that all of the fuel pumps are now on we have no white lights in that section ready for our pushback We're going to now use the EFB to push back the aeroplane. So beacon light goes on. And we change in the ground services page to push back as we remove all of the ground equipment, including the jetty, ready for our push and start sequence. When you press that down arrow there, you'll then notice your tug begins to move into position. Give it a couple of minutes just uh, while it sorts itself out, connects to the nose wheel and we are in charge of the pushback so we need to use a blend of external views to look and finish the pushback to try and get onto the taxiway centre line and because we need to face north for our taxi route to 36 left we're going to control the pushback by clicking on the left arrow to make sure the plane's nose will move to the right so having completed our pushback, disconnected the tug and set the parking brake we're going to start engines 3 and 4 first simultaneously and then engines 1 and 2 so ignition mode start engine 4 and engine 3 we're going to watch all of the engine instruments in those centre displays And when the N1 values reach about 20%, then we know engines 3 and 4 have successfully started. We'll then do the same for engines 1 and 2. Now we've started all four engines, we can turn the ignition mode back to norm. And then we can turn the APU off in order to help preserve the fuel that we have on board. We don't need the APU anymore. So APU bleed off, master switch off, that's then going to shut itself down. Back down to the pedestal and uh, at this point we want to select flap 2 like so now we've set the flap configuration the flight control page appears as such and we can conduct our flight control tests so we can move the ailerons and rudders to their maximum positions returning them to neutral each time to make sure that we have correct control input over the aeroplane We would also want to make sure we've set auto brake max. 
but when we apply full brakes that will currently disengage so we won't set that until we are ready to take off and now that is our after start checks complete so we can go nose light to taxi everything else is set make sure we're all clear and then we can apply a gentle bit of power to begin our taxi in turns you don't want to be more than 10 knots uh, don't forget this is a quite a wide long-ish aeroplane and for certainly steep turns of 90 degrees or more you want to have no more than 10 knots for the turn keeping the throttles in a symmetrical position at all times taxi speeds for straight lines you can get up to 30 knots and then you want to use one smooth brake application down to 15 knots again almost similar to that of the A320 Neo um, to prevent overheating those brakes but for now that is the end of episode 1 I hope you found it useful hit like it, subscribe and join us for episode 2 covering takeoff climb to cruise in the ladder VFR A340 300 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. In the meantime as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.